Good morning, Pender. All you need is love. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. Love, love, love. There's nothing you can do that can't be done. There's nothing you can sing that can't be sung There's nothing you can say But you can learn to play the game It's easy All you need is love All you need is love Love is all you need There's nothing you can do that can't be done There's nothing you can sing that can't be sung There's nothing you can say that you can learn to play the game It's easy Love is all you need. Love is all you need. Thank you, Brian Green. It's kind of a hard song to come up with for uh, Pentecost that you want to sing along with. And I imagine when I was talking to Brian, that the song may not have been about Pentecost per se, may not have been about the Bible verse per se, but what really the song could be symbolizing by the Beatles, um, and in this case anyway, is that the love that uh, the disciples felt like they needed. They were probably pretty scared after Christ had died and scared for their lives. So they imagine they were probably hiding and very secretive. They probably only moved around when it was dark probably didn't see or go to all the places that they wanted to see and go. Um, you know, and, and maybe in the back of their mind from the Gospel of John, uh, they were thinking about uh, Christ when he told them, um, I will ask the Father and he will send another companion and he'll be with you forever. Maybe they really needed that companion. So in their hearts, they were singing, all we need is love. Ba, 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 da, da. So the Bible verse that we are going to discuss today, kids, is a long one, okay? It's Acts 2, verses 1 to 41. What? So parents, this is hero up time. I'm going to put up here on the screen, hero time, and I'll again put the Bible verse on. When that comes on, I want you to go ahead and pause the video altogether. And I want to take a moment for you to read that with your kids, because it's so important. And it'll mean a lot more than anything they can see here on the screen, because it's about the conception of the Holy Spirit. It's about the, the, uh, the ability to, to speak and make disciples of Christ. It's the beginning of church, if you will. Um, so clearly very important, so important that even on Pentecost, which is a lesser known holiday. Let's be serious, kids. Who's heard of Easter? Raise your hands. Good. Who's heard of Christmas? Raise your hands. Great. How many of you know about Pentecost? Hmm. Not as many of you raising your hand, and that's okay. But Pentecost is really important. And as you get older and you start to value 
the things that you've learned at church, you, you have to go back to the origin. Why? Well, it's here in this Bible verse that we're going to study, and it's why we call this Sunday, Sunday, Pentecost Sunday. And we dress up in red. Did you notice? I got some, some red on. Let me show you. I've got my red shirt. I've got my red pants. I've even got my red shoes on. And if we were in church together and not in our houses, you probably would see the pastors and the choir in their vestments, their red vestments. And it's a symbolized sort of the, uh, it symbolizes the joy and the fire of the Holy Spirit. And so we, we remember that. Because in our Bible verse, it'll tell us that this is the conception of the Holy Spirit. Um, this is what Christ was talking about to the 12 disciples. About what he was sending, what God was sending them to fill their hearts the right way again. To give them courage to not back down and to preach everything they had learned. Those 12 disciples from Jesus Christ before he was killed and crucified into everlasting life. Two weeks ago, we had a contest. It was about Paul, about the sermon about Paul changing. And in that sermon, that pre-recorded sermon for children and family, I don't care how old you are, uh, we uh, had a contest. And that was just to watch the video and say, how many times Mr. Mr. David uh, changed his shirt? Well, I actually had four winners from two different families. One of them is our very own Pender family from Annabelle and Isaac. They put in an email and said, Mr. David, you wore six shirts. It was awesome. And they're getting a prize coming out this week. Um, and then from a whole nother state, not even a member of our churches, just guess, saw the video, shared, I guess, from Maryland, Theodore and Josie. Theodore and Josie also emailed in with the correct information, and guess what? They won a prize also being emailed out. So very, very good to all of you. Thank you all for participating. Four prizes, I'm happy to send them out to you. But this week we have a contest too, because we're celebrating what? Pentecost, what? Pentecost, what? Scream it. Yeah, because we're celebrating Pentecost, that's right. I want you to wear red or draw something all red, or show me your favorite red thing. And whatever that is, whether it's the clothing, the spirit that you put on, the celebration in picture or art, take a picture. And if it's okay with your parents, send it into this email that's on the screen here. And if you do, that's all you have to do. And I will send you a prize. Thank you for playing. Oh, I thought about something being from the Washington, D.C. area, Northern Virginia. I wonder if the red from the Washington Nationals and the Washington Capitals is why we are winning. Okay, probably not. Probably it's just the great players and the good organizations. But I, I know. I'm missing baseball. Raise your hand if you're missing baseball. All right, back to Pentecost. Back to Pentecost. Attention, all parents. Attention. It's hero time. I want you to get your Bible out and find that verse a bible i don't have a bible get your phone and plug it in get your tablet plug it in whatever it is get this bible verse here and start to read to your children read to yourself but read it right now it is my privilege and honor to introduce an older smarter and better looking version of me my dad to read today's Bible scripture. I am going to read today from the New International Version Study Bible, uh, Acts 2, 1 through 8, and then 12 through 41. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. 
They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard the sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking? Galileans, then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Now, in my Bible, there is a map of the area where they are and where all of the Romans conquered uh, countries around the Mediterranean Sea, the Black Sea, and the Red Sea. And these, all these different kinds of people were in the area and they heard them talking in their own tongues, not just in uh, the the uh, tongues of, not just in the, the speech of the disciples. So I'm going to go from where I left off at number uh, eight to go down to number twelve. Amazed and perplexed. They asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they have had too much wine. Peter stood up with the eleven and raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what is spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants and both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in all these days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire that billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth was a man credited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did, which God did among you through him, as you, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said this about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is my own right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body will also rest in hope, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead you will let your body see one to see no one decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and he knew that God had promised him the on oath that he would Place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke to the resurrection of the Messiah uh, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did he did his body see decay. God has raised his Jesus to life, and we are witnesses of it, exalted to the right hand of God. He has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out 
what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit in my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, and in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are off, for, the, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleased, and he pleaded with them, save, save youngsters from this corrupt generation. Those who expect, accepted this message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number to that day. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Dad. It's a long verse, but so worth it. I, I've been praying a lot about how to bring the Holy Spirit. How, how do I make sense of it to you? Because it was a hard thing for me to think of when I was your age, of what that looked like or what it felt like. And uh, so I went around my neighborhood, and of course, I ran into the Kambachers, and Corey Kambacher met me outside, and I asked him the same question. What do you think the Holy Spirit was all about? And this is what happened. So, Corey, how strong was the wind Christ sent the 12 disciples and started the Holy Spirit and the conception of the whole church and everything? How, how strong do you think that wind was? I think it's pretty strong. How strong? Maybe something like this. <laughs> Do you want to see how the fire went? What, from the whole... No, I'm good, man. I'm good. Y'all see... See y'all later. Bye. Thank I love the Kambacher family. Corey, thanks for having a little fun with me and uh, trying to illustrate that. But what is the Holy Spirit and what does it feel like? Well, the Bible verse that my dad read suggests a very strong wind. And they said something about snake and fire and all this other stuff. It's really hard to illustrate that. But, you know, one of the definitions that I always hung on to from when I was a little kid about the Holy Spirit was the Holy Spirit is simply the presence of God every day. No matter where you go, it's always with you through the Holy Spirit. And that's something to think about. But what does it feel like? Well, kids, it feels like that last long hug and kiss you get before you go to bed. It feels like that moment when you see grandma or grandpa and you hadn't seen them for a very long time. And that first time, bloop, there they are. Fills you right up in here. Well, that's kind of like the Holy Spirit. It's when you go to school and you see your kids and you're all together. And there's nothing on your mind except for having a good time and being with them. That's kind of how it is about the Holy Spirit. That's, that's part of God being with you every day, all the time. All those happy things that you can think of that make you feel good inside. That's the Holy Spirit. Now, find the other part of this Bible scripture um, is really important too because it says the disciples made disciples in this Bible scripture. How many? Thousands. How many thousands? Did you hear it? One thousand? Two thousand? It says three thousand disciples and they ate together, slept together, praised together. And they had this ability, the twelve disciples, to speak languages that other people understood in their own Tongue. And uh, and so, how do I illustrate that? Well, I've been telling you for a long time that our sign language verse, the last three, four weeks, do you remember what it is? It's Acts 4.20. 
As for us, we can't stop speaking about what we've seen and heard. And while we talk about that Bible verse, we've had it signed by Miss Lori Lett, and she will sign it again today. But I wanted to tell you, now I wanted to show you how many languages the Bible and how many languages the Bible is spoken in. Nice flies everywhere want to be part of the Holy Spirit lecture. And so you know what I did? I put an email out and I said, hey, Pender folk, Pender family, how many languages can we come up with and who wants to speak? And I was overwhelmed. So without further delay, here is Pender family speaking to you in different languages. Acts 4 verse 20. Hi David, det er Kristoffer. Mitt bibel er på min iPad. Sitatet er slik. Jeg klarer ikke å slutte å snakke om det jeg har sett og gjort. Quant à nous, nous ne pouvons pas arrêter de parler de ce que nous avons vu et entendu. My name is Sarah Kudien. I am going to read from Acts chapter 4 verse 20 in my mother tongue, which is Malayalam, spoken in Kerala, India. Nyangalko Nyangal Kantun Ketu Midikina, the Prastavika, the Dipan Kayina, the La Yena Uttaram Parani. Woman swore, Kanjian swore, Tingjenda, Bunang Bushwa. Hi, Melissa Kirkendall here, and I'll be reading Acts four twenty in Spanish. En cuanto a nosotros, no podemos evitar hablar sobre lo que hemos visto y ayudo. God bless. Cuanto a noi, no pasiamo fare a menos de palare de ciò que habíamos visto e sinito. Konnichiwa. Hi, this is Kimiko Hara. I'm a member of Penda United Master Church. I was born in Japan. I can speak Japanese very well, and English so so. That's my skill. Uh, today I want to read Acts four twenty, and I have a Bible English version, an English version, not English, and the Japanese Bible. I can read. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen. And hard. Japanese Bible said, Watas Tachiwa, Jibun no Mitakoto, Mata Kita Koto, Hanasana Yuakeni wa Kimasen. That is Japanese Bible said. Thank you so much for the uh, opportunity and uh, speak Japanese. And I said, Arigato, that is a thank you. And uh, I want to see you soon. Bye bye. Bye -bye. Hello, my name is Thomas Parker, and I am going to read our Bible verse for the week. It comes from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 20. As for us, we can't stop speaking about what we've seen and heard. Wow. Remember in the beginning of this Sunday school lesson, I said the disciples needed something. They were scared. And in the book of John, Jesus promised them that God was going to send them something to be with them forever and always. And that's the Holy Spirit. And remember still for weeks, I've been telling you about it. it's so important to deliver God's word that the Bible is written in so many different languages. That was incredible. Thank you everyone who contributed in their tongue. I really appreciate it. And it's good for you to understand how important it is that Christianity is all over the world. That's nine different languages if you weren't counting already, nine. It's amazing. If that joy that you feel right now doesn't feel like you're giving yourself a hug, go ahead, squeeze tight. That's the Holy Spirit right there, right now. 
It's a little bit hard because we say people need to gather together, but I've got something I've been thinking about preparing the Sunday school lesson for you. And that is, God has a funny way of speaking. And it being quarantined means that we get back to the basics. Seeing the people and talking to them on the phone or Zoom or Google or whatever it is that we do, that brings us face to face in a way that's a little bit more prepared, a little bit more sincere because we are taking the time to prepare for that. It's a little bit like the disciples getting together as well. And that is the, when the Holy Spirit came to them. So think about these moments. Think about the blessings we have despite the fact that we have to stay indoors and when we go outside, we're wearing masks and all that other stuff. Think about how close you are to the Holy Spirit right now. Let's finish in a prayer, shall we? Can you repeat after me? Close your eyes. Put your hands together. And let's say this. Repeat after me. Dear God, come Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Amen. Bye. Enjoy yourselves today. Put your red on. Be happy.